What's going on guys? Jota here, your coach of the Seattle Seekings for season three of the WBE going into our week, what is it, nine match, taking on the Florida Gators coach by It's Gator. Now, first of all, I got to thank Gator because he single-handedly salvaged my season by offering to trade me uh, my Dawn fan in exchange for his Slurpuff, which uh, allowed me to make the transactions necessary to pick up a Lomomola, Umbreon, uh, Bisharp, and Avalug. So I am forever grateful to him for that. He has turned my 4-0 season into it's been a 3-1 season since then and honestly the one is against MV and then this game's against him so if I go 3-2 only losing to two of the biggest titans in the league I'm okay with that that said I hate this team and everything it has uh, going for it as far as roster is concerned I really don't like this core I really don't like dealing with Heatran Keldeo and Celebi, Zero Oro is a massive threat. I love using Archeops. I understand how how amazingly good it is. Mega Heracross can sweep teams by itself. And Pukumuku is just an incredibly centralizing threat that just it being on the team means I have to prep probably three Mons a certain way. So that way it can't just soak Toxic me or just be a general pain in my uh, posterior. So uh, that is all kinds of fun. Plus I have to win the Hazard War against Dawnfan, which can both lay rocks and clear them at the same time. I'm going to have to probably kill the thing and then lay my own. I'm not even going to bother trying to lay my own rocks while Don Fan is alive or while it's in any sort of advantageous position to come uh, and come out to play here. So as you can see, hold on, I'm just going to refresh uh, the page here because I'm going to put it over on the rankings so we can take a look. This is public, by the way, so there's no spoilers here. Uh, we have the Chim Chargers who just beat us 3-0 and the Florida Gators who we're playing right now out in front. So we're back on our BS from the beginning of the season where we're only playing teams that are over 50%. That's not really true. The rest of the season looks pretty nice after we get through uh, this game. So it's kind of like if I take my lumps now, uh, you know, we end up going three and six. That's fine. I might be able to rally and go seven, six with the remaining coaches that we have left, depending on Uzi is the giant question mark, I think for me. Meanwhile, over in the sword division, you see the Bronx, Bronx Veritex just continuing to dominate out in front. You see the New Orleans uh, the New Orleans Pelipers, John, the Milwaukee Bewares, Wolfie, and the Minnesota Vikavolts, Dan, aka A Drive, all vying for that number two spot in playoffs so they can have uh, a relatively easy path forward. And then you also see the South Texas Sableyes, the Free State Torcats, and the Newcastle Nido Kings running out the bottom. And in our division, you see uh, in no, in, well, in every particular order, uh, Kelly, Leo, uh, Elliot, Luke, and Patty holding on to those bottom five spots. Now, Patty is in an interesting spot where if anybody gets one win, we can take him out. And that's what I hope to do here. Uh, if he loses his, who's he up against uh, in his week five game or his week nine game, he takes on Fane Attacks. Fane Attacks and Patty are, are about same tier, I think, as far as teams are concerned. So I think that'll be an interesting game. But if Fane Attacks wins and we somehow upset Gator by more, we can catapult him to seventh place. Uh, assuming the Melbourne Rotoms were to lose as well, and they play the they play the Bullet Punch Club, so that is not at all out of the realm of possibility because it's you know Uzi Gunner and he's a fantastic battler. So uh, if we are able to get the upset here, we can pass into playoffs uh, with a couple things going our way. So not out of the realm of possibility, but we still have I think it's four more weeks after this anyway, so we have plenty of opportunities to try and make it happen. Now focusing on the match. At hand, oh, that's Patty's team. I want this right here, the great, great matchup. You might notice his team grossly outspeeds mine. What a coincidence. Zero Aura, Archeops, Frostlass, Keldeo, all at least on the slow end ties by Infernate. Celebi, Kangaskhan, uh, but, well, okay, they don't outspeed uh, Manectric. Celebi outspeeds Haxorus and Sigilith, but the problem with Manectric is I just don't have a place for him. I would love to bring him for Volt, for Volt Absorb on the Zero Aura, but the Zero Aura has enough coverage moves and there's enough things that just completely, completely and utterly ruin. You see me mousing over here. Archeops, Heatran, Dawnfan. Manectric has no business being in on any of those. I'm hoping he doesn't bring Keldeo because he sees Manectric, but I really, really doubt it. I think Keldeo is going to make an appearance. Um, but I'm kind of locked into a very set build this week and I'm hoping I can make it happen because I'm... I, I feel like I have to play perfectly in order to present the opportunity to win, and that's not a good matchup. So uh, let's break it down and talk about what we're dealing with, the main threats, what I'm what I'm concerned with, and just kind of take it slow and take it from there. So as you can see, he's got Zero Aura, Archeops, Frost, Last Keldeo, Celebi, Kangaskhan, Heatran, Mega Heracross, Donpan, and Pukumuku. Now, like I said a second ago, he's got a Hazard War that I need to try and beat or try and win somehow uh, versus that Donpan that can that I traded to him. 
uh, that can uh, rapid spin and lay its own rock. So I can't just uh, I can't just win outright. I have I have to win in two mons. What he can win in one. So I have to hopefully defog his hazards, kill the Donphan, and then bring my own hazards out later if I want hazards at all. Yukimuku, very centralizing thing because if he does opt to bring it and I don't have anything that's set up or some other kind, sorry, setup doesn't even matter because this thing gets unaware. So if I don't have Toxic or Taunt or something that can can go to toe to toe with this meme of a mon, he can just continue to rest stall me out with this thing and I can't do anything about it. So just the, it's kind of like what Ditto was last week. Just by having Pukumuku on the board, it prevents or it, it creates so much more of a need for me to prep a certain way just in the you know just in case this thing shows and i really really don't like that mega heracross this thing can sweep any team anytime anywhere as long as it has a speed tier uh and the fastest threats are off the board so mega heracross of course is a bug flying type i hope to uh, i hope to knock it or a bug fighting type excuse me it's weak to flying four four times weak to flying i'm hoping to revenge kill it with infernape in any situation hopefully the heat train will be gone by then but if not, I'm going to have to 50-50 into a close combat to hit the Heatran and a uh, Flare Blitz to hit the Heracross, both of which uh, are not that great. Well, I think I might be able to take it out. I'd have to run the Calc for Mega Heracross. Actually, I can do that right now. If I have Heracross Mega with the set I'm running, with the set I'm running, close combat does nothing. Okay, yeah. So we have to call that Flare Blitz right or we're only dealing 30% and taking... Uh, and taking a massive hit back. Rock Blast will kill, Close Combat will kill. Not at all a great time, so I should probably have my abs learned by now, but whatever. Anyway, so, so Heracross, kind of a pain. Heatran, obviously another rocker if he opts to not go with Donphan. If he doesn't bring Donphan, I can assume nine times out of 10 that Heatran is his rocker and is a great trapper. It's a great Z user. It has plenty of coverage and it has all kinds of status moves that I can use to drive me insane. It can taunt me, I can, you know, it can burn me, it can toxic me, it can run sub, you know, I mean, pretty much anything can toxic or run sub, but that's not the point. The point is it's a mod with plenty of utility and it's really, really strong and really, really bulky and I have to deal with it one way or another. Kangaskhan, honestly, I don't see him bringing Kangaskhan, but if he does, it'd be a great switching on a ghost type. Do I have a ghost type worth prepping for? Nope, I don't have a ghost type, I don't have a ghost type worth prepping for, which makes me think, Angus Khan is not showing up this week, so I'm hoping I get that one right at least. If it does show, it's just going to be a, a fake out, you know, kind of trollish mon. Maybe maybe go for some stab returns. What's its ability? Uh, scrappy, can't flinch, whatever. Um, it can toxic things, it can wish. I don't know. It's not the biggest start on this field. I really, really hope I don't eat my words heavily on that one. Uh, Celebi, pivot, setup, and healing and support. So it's got Trick Room, it's got all kinds of status, it's got Aromatherapy, it's got both screens, I think. Uh, does it have both screens? Yeah, it's got both screens. Uh, I can set up with Nasty Plot, I can set up with Calm Mind, and it has can uh, run the table on me with a lot of coverage. So hopefully I can just get Infernape in, not catch a Psychic, and U-turn it. That's kind of the plan. That's kind of the only plan, and if Infernape goes down without Celebi off the board, I'm in trouble and have to rely on uh, him staying in on a Bisharp, which seems less than likely. Uh, Keldeo, also another major threat because it's a water fighting type. It's got really, really strong uh, special attack. Uh, its physical attack isn't terrible, but nobody really runs physical Keldeo. Uh, but basically, Scalds and uh, Secret Swords are going to be the bane of my existence for the majority of this game. So that's awesome, and it's got great. It's got some great coverage too, and it's got you know it's it's commonly run as a sub user. So another sub user that I got to worry about. If you're in, if you runs Combine Keldeo, I've seen Combine Keldeo 6 0 someone before, so uh, by itself, I think it was just the Keldeo came in, set up, and won. So, yeah, fun stuff. Moving on to more fun stuff Frost Slash, Spikes. Spikes, 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 and Destiny Bond. Oh, did I mention Spikes? Because there's lots of Spikes on this thing, and I'll probably see lots of Spikes from this thing. And I can't just go and switch in my Defogger, because my Defogger is weak to Ice and weak to Ghost. Fun times. Archaeops. One of my favorite low tier mons, it is an amazing choice banded head smasher, or a choice banded rock slider, or a choice banded earthquaker. You can kind of just run it with choice band on anything. And I know a lot of people don't because, like, well, it gets defeatist, so you might as well run it as a suicide lead. <gasps> Y'all are missing out immensely. I don't know why you would not run a choice band on Archaeops to completely ruin the day of any opponent with. I mean, imagine just the raw damage of a head smash, which already does. Uh, 150 base power, combine that with stab to get up to 225, combine that with a choice band to get up to like 
340 something and you're looking at you know you're looking down the barrel of a loaded gun but that loaded gun is an archaeops so yikes that yeah, yikes uh what is your what is your switch in for a 300 base power head smash uh leave a comment down below what your switch in is uh i'm sure there's a few of course but like if you're if you're me if you're if you're me what is your switch in to that because all i can think of is a loma mola or umbreon that is not very reassuring so fun stuff in general i i i, I don't like this team very much oh and then zerawara is just cheeky electric cat so cheeky thundercat so yeah cheeky thundercat gets to do cheeky thundercat things and i don't like it at all so here's how i'm going to attempt to not humiliate myself this week with a team that can hopefully just like last week bring this to at least a 3-0 loss so i at least look like i'm trying and my record isn't completely in shambles and i can still hopefully come back and make a playoff run with the latter four games of the season if i can up upset him with this team i will be amazed but Honestly, I don't think the matchup is there for me this week, and I'm saying that now. Expectations are low, so that way I can surprise myself and be uh, and go above those expectations later, if possible. So, Infernape has to be Run Scarf this week. Why? Because I get outspent. That's why. So I absolutely 100% have to bring Choice Scarf, uh, because I'm not about to bring Focus Ash and just lose this thing. Close Combat, Flare Blitz, Thunder Punch, U-Turn. It covers basically the entire team, so Infernape's going to be a great revenge killer. But I have to make my predictions right. If I don't make my predictions right, then my Infernape doesn't really do anything, and I just go ahead and have to switch out over and over and over, and U-Turn and U-Turn and U-Turn, and just watch my team get whittled down slowly. Loma Mola, speaking of things that don't get whittled down slowly, is my Regenerator. Knock off Wit, Refresh, Toxic, and Wish. Why am I running Refresh? Because he's got like three different things that commonly run Toxic, most notably a Pukamuku. I would like to knock off whatever he's got if he's got, if he, if, you know, Archaeops is in or something like that. I can knock off its its band if it has one or its focus ash if it has one great not a big uh no complaints for me uh and then wish and toxic are just fairly standard on a little mola because a single wish will let me get in uh pretty much anything as long as it's at full health when it goes in and then no matter how much what kind of hit it takes it can pretty much come back to full and i have to run physical defensive this week because honestly there's just too many physical defense uh physical threats and most of the special threats are super effective against me anyway so why bother Sigilith, Def Defog, Psychic, Toxic, Roost. I honestly was about this close to running a Z Energy Ball on this this week, but then I realized, wait a minute, number one, it doesn't do any kind of damage to Pukamuku. Number two, uh, it just, I can beat Pukamuku out with Toxic because he doesn't get any status curing ability and I have Magic Guard anyway, so I win that 1v1. So there wasn't any real point in rocking the Z. So I'll just be running Psychic and Leftovers instead and hopefully things will drop. And if not, oh well, I can just try to sit on them for a while. I think this is going to be a long game because most of my answers are going to be on the Thickum side of things. Slurpuff, Calm Mind, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ground, and Dazzling Me. Unburdened, set with Citrus Berry. Relatively standard. We have run this in a previous week, except it was not this wild of an EV spread, and it was an HP ground. I think it just had Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, and uh, Sticky Webs, question mark, uh, which we're not running this week. But he'll, he might think we will, so maybe he'll switch in Dawn Fan on me or something like that to get rid of the webs. That would be nice. Uh, the speed is meant to outspeed the Zerawara at, uh, at plus two from the Unburdened boost, so if he's not Scarf, we will outspeed. That is the that is the goal, the strat, the plan. Now, Mega Venusaur. The only way this thing loses to Ikumuku is if it catches a Soap before a Toxic. You can't do that with a sub. So... Sub Swords Dance, Power Whip, Earthquake. I can Swords Dance on this on that thing. I know it's unaware, but it would be good setup fodder. So that way, when I kill it with a Power Whip, I think does. I think it does a good. I think that's probably my only win con is getting a subbed up Mega Venusaur to be set up with Swords Dance and just go to town on things. So Puku Muku takes seventy-two to eighty-five from a Power Whip. That's amazing. Uh, with how stupid bulk he is. That's max bulk. And then from a heat train. With a heat train on the field. If I already have my sub, Earthquake is a is a guaranteed kill without setup. So that's the goal the plan. And I think Keldeo doesn't take a power up in any shape or form. So the plan is basically just gonna be get something on the field in front of Pukamuku, sub up on it. Sub up on it with Venusaur and try to win that way. That's the only real way I can see a full-on win con. Mega Venusaur going down early is a lose con for me. Losing Venusaur early loses me this game, in my opinion, hands down. Bisharp, Taunt, Knockoff, Stealth Rock, and Pursuit. 
anything in the way of anything in the way of Celebi or uh, let's see, well, pretty much Celebi or Frostlass are the main ones. If any of them kill anything, I just go ahead and send in my Bisharp in pursuit and kill. That's the goal. That's that's what I'm hoping. Or if the Archaeops is in, but Defeatus is already active, uh, I can try to do that. But honestly, now that I think about it, he might just go for the um, might just go for an earthquake if he thinks he's going to die anyway. And just go for Chip. I am running Knockoff just because Knockoff does decent amount of damage to everything, and I need that just a little bit more than Sucker Punch. I don't want to be put into 50/50s, uh, and I need my rocks and I need the taunt to prevent rocks of his or prevent any status from Puku or anything like that. And he's kind of set up. So I got a little bit of taunt, oh, and I'm running a Shuckaberry because uh, I can take an Earthquake at that point. So yeah, that is the team. Again, I really, 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 really don't like this matchup, and I wish I could do this any other way, but because of the threats on the field, my, my building is a little centralized, and this team is entirely my own. Um, uh, Harris was a bit busy this week, so I did run some, I ran some builds by him, but this was like, I built this team from scratch, so hopefully... If it doesn't work out, we'll know why, but whatever. Well, we'll give it a shot. Anyway, leave a comment down below on what you would do differently or how well you think this team is going to do. And leave a like on this video to uh, console me in my um, my time of need because I'm probably going to need it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you all for watching. This is Joder signing out. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.